All right, so today we're going to be doing a interesting technique, which is going to allow us to generate a CSV from an object and then actually download it on the client browser without ever going to a server. Normally for this kind of thing, you would send data or pull data from a server and the server would, would serve a file to you and the browser would download it. But here we're going to generate the CSV client side and download it. Okay, so I've just got a page set up here. It's got a button on it. When you click the, there's a function. When you click the button, it fires this method called get report and it just says button clicked. So if I just run this real quick um, and I just go to download generation and just open that in Chrome real quick. Um, if I click the button, alert, button clicked. Okay, nothing fancy here. Just starting up the execution of the browser. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to get some data and then we want to generate a CSV. That's the first thing. So I ha this is an async function. Um, error while computing document highlights. Whatever. Um, okay, this is an async function because uh, we are going to do some async await stuff in here. So I have previously used JSON generator to generate a bunch of JSON. So console or const uh, JSON URL equals uh, this link. And I've, I've used JSON generator just to generate this. So we're going to use fetch, which is the browser way to get data, a newer way. Um, so we're just going to do uh, const res equals await fetch. Fetch returns a promise. And we're just going to fetch the JSON URL. Now, the result of fetch is not actually the data. So if we were to console.log res, for example, and if we go back to here and we inspect and view the console and hit refresh and then hit download, you can see that the response doesn't actually give us the data we're looking for. Uh, it's a stream. So to get the actual data, we actually have to say const JSON equals await JSON. Now, I think that, no, sorry, res.json. I think this is stupid, but whatever. It's how it is. So console.log JSON, go back to the browser, refresh, and hit download. And there's our object with our bunch of entries uh, from JSON. So this is all good. This is all just random data. It's whatever. Okay, cool. So let's form a CSV out of this. So I want to make this a nice function that you can reuse over and over again. So I want to make a function that's like const CSV data equals uh, object to CSV. CSV, and we're going to pass it um, the JSON. Okay, that's sort of what we're looking for. Now, I don't actually want to CSV everything. I just want to CSV some stuff. So let's actually map this to just some data that we want. So let's just say const data equals uh, JSON.map, um, and let's just say row, and then we'll return. And actually, we're going to do an implicit return. So we're going to wrap this in parentheses. And we're going to return this object now instead of having to write return. So age is row.age. And then email is row.email. And then first name, row.name.first. And last name, row.name.last. OK, and so we're going to say const console.log data. And let's pass that into this function. I'm also going to comment this out because we're going to give this a test to make sure our map is correct. I'm going to get rid of that because we're not really going to use this. OK, cool. So let's refresh the browser here and hit the button. And there we go. We have a nice simplified object. So this is, this is the array that we want to turn into a CSV. OK, so let's run this function, which we haven't written yet. So let's go write that function. Really? Command? It doesn't do that? OK, whatever. Still getting used to VS Code. I just switched like two days ago. All right, so let's write this function object to CSV. So up here, const object CSV equals a function, and it's going to take data. So let's talk about what we want this function to do. So we need to get the headers for a CSV. Then we need to loop over the rows. And then we need to form escaped comma separated 
separated values. Okay, that's sort of what we need to do here. So let's start with getting the headers. So let's just so the headers of a JSON object will be uh, the keys of one of them. So let's use the keys from the very first object as the headers. We could optionally pass in headers if we wanted to, but I'm not programming that now. So we're going to say whatever the headers are of the very first object, those are the headers that we're going to need to that we're going to want. So we're going to say const headers equals um, object keys. That's how you get the keys of the object and data zero. So the first element in the data. Okay, and we're also assuming here that this is an array that's being passed in because in a CSV it's all about the rows. Okay. Um, now, I want to, before we sort of move on past this, what's our final output going to be? It, it needs to be a, a bunch of CSV rows, okay? A, a, bunch of, a bunch of new line separated rows. So I'm going to start off an object that we're going to try to form. And I'm going to call this const CSV rows. And that's an empty array. And we're going to be pushing things to this that we will eventually turn into the file. So headers is the first row. So I will say CSV rows.push. And we want to push the headers. Now, again, it is the CSV, and so things need to be comma separated. So it's headers that join by a comma. Okay? That's the first thing. So then let's stop here and take a look at what this is before we move too much further. So I'm just going to say console.log headers. Just let's just take a look at this. Let's go to the browser, refresh, and hit download. And there you go. Uh, this is an object. Um, I, oh, I don't want to look at headers. I want to look at CSV rows. Again, CSV rows is actually actually the thing we want to be looking at. So there we go. Um, CSV rows is an array of rows right now, which is fine. But the first row is correctly comma separated. Okay, so that's the right start. That's what a CSV looks like to start. All right, so now we've got our headers. So the next thing we do is loop over the rows and add those in too. Okay, so I can say... Um, Data dot for each uh, row. Um, I'm actually going to I'm going to use a uh, for of loop instead because there's no reason. Th there's not a good reason to use for each uh, much at all anymore. Actually, uh, now that for of is widely available, so we're just going to say um, for const uh, row of data. So now we're going to loop over because what you can see here is that this is not creating an anonymous function, which takes a little bit of effort on the browser's part. We no longer need to do that. Uh, for each does create a new function. This doesn't, and we get the same result. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and let's see. What, what are we going to do here? So we need to add the data um, to our object. Now, it is very important <laughs> for a CSV that the, uh, that the order of our keys in each row is the same. So we need absolutely four items every time, and they match exactly age, email, first name, last name. In order for the CSV to work, it has to match this on every row. Okay? So what we need to do then is we need to map over the headers because we need to make sure that we're in the same order with those four things every single time. Okay? So we're going to say headers.map. So we're going to map over the headers now, and given the header, we're going to do a bunch of stuff. So now we're mapping over the headers, and so we're at the first header, which in this case is age. And so what we need to do is add that to our, what well, we would want to return uh, row, in, in this case it's row header. Okay, so row header is our first row, header is age, so it's going to say row age for the first one. Okay, and then that's going to return that uh, back. And so for our map here, um, I'm trying to figure out how to best explain this. Let's let's take a look at what this looks like. So I'm just going to say um, const values equals this map, and then I want to just console dot log um, values. And so uh, this should be the four values for each row. So let's just take a look at that for a second. Okay, so for each row, you can see that we have these values, and that's great, and that's what we need. And so we need to join them by comma, just like we did with the headers, okay? So we have values, so if we do values.join 
by comma. Let's refresh that and take a look. That's what we're looking for. That's the rest of the rows. Um, now, we have to be a little careful here because it's possible that these names or something else of this text could potentially have a comma in it. And if it does, we've screwed up our CSV. So we need to protect that from happening. So we really need to escape any quotes. Well, in a CSV, you're allowed to quote each of the sections. So we need to wrap each of the values in a, in a quote situation first. So uh, instead of returning row header, we're going to return a template literal, and we're going to wrap this in like that. And then we're just going to wrap this whole thing in quotes so that it's, it's um, wrapped. And so if we take a look at that again, you can see now everything is wrapped. But if we have a quote inside of here, which is possible, that also screws it up. So before we actually wrap it in quotes, we actually need this to escape quotes. So I'm actually going to say like cons escaped equals, and we'll just we're going to use regex here. So we're going to say that dot replace. Now the regex that we're going to use here, we're going to replace quote with, uh, and we need g, so many quotes with backslash backslash quote. So this is going to, so this is the escape value that we want to replace quote with if we ever find any. But this allows us to use the slash. So that's our regex to replace this value. And I didn't mean to get rid of that. So row header dot replace this. So this is an escaped value. And then we're going to have our escaped value wrapped in quotes. OK, let's take a look at that. Uh, row header dot replace is not a function. Uh, row header should be row header. Ah, row header is not always a string because the first one that we find is a number. And you cannot use dot replace on a number. OK? So what we need to do is we need to first coerce this value to a string so that we can use it on dot replace. So the easiest way to coerce something to a string is to wrap it in parentheses and add a single quote plus plus, or sorry, single quote plus in front. So this coerces it to a string that allows us to always use the replace function, which replaces quotes with backslash quote. OK? And then we pass that in that way. So let's refresh and hit download. And there you go. Same result, but if any of these had a quote, it would be escaped. And uh, it's all wrapped in, in uh, quotations now, so all the commas are safe. OK? And so we would just want to, um, we actually want to push each of these uh, each of these things onto, well, yeah, this is what we want to push onto CSV rows. So CSV rows dot push each of each of these things. And so now after that, we can sort of say console.log CSV rows. Refresh that. Okay, so here's each of our rows. Our first one is our, our headers. And then our next ones are all uh, quote and pro properly quoted and escaped values. So these are the right array, but we can't have an array when we print a CSV. So what we need to do now is actually join everything by a new line. So we want to return CSV rows dot join by backslash n. And now if we look at the return of CSV data down here, CSV data you'll find that we've got a really nice, there we go. This is a proper CSV. It's new line separated. It's got escaped, uh, it's got escaped quotations if it's needed. It's got escaped commas because it's separated. So there we go, we got a good CSV. We have a nice object to CSV function to use. Now we've got our CSV, so the next step is we need to download it. So we're gonna make a function that doesn't exist yet called download and we're going to pass it the CSV data. Okay, so let's make the download function. So const download equals a function. Now what's this download function going to do? So in order to do this trick, we need to make a blob, it's called. So new blob is how you download stuff. 
And that's going to take, so we pass this data, right? So we pass this data. It's a new blob. The first parameter that a blob takes is the data. The second parameter is the type of thing it is, and that's in an object. So type is text slash CSV. Okay, so we made it blob. So just say const blob equals. Um, now that we have a blob, we actually need to uh, send that blob to the browser. Okay, now the browser has a, a way to create an object from URL. And so we're going to say const URL equals window dot url.create uh, object url and that takes the blob so this is the this is sort of the crux of the trick here is that this window.url function in browsers allows you to create a url version of an object so a url version of our csv and so then we're just going to create an a tag and click it so const a equals uh, document.create element uh, a and then uh, we're going to say a.set attribute um, hidden we don't want it to show up anywhere um, so we're just going to set the attribute hidden then a dot set attribute uh, href to that url that we just made and then a dot set attribute um, download so setting the attribute download allows it to be downloaded to a file name we're just going to call it download.csv and then we're going to append it to the document so document.body dot append append child append the a tag then we're going to click it and then after we're done the click we're going to remove it so document.body dot remove child a and that will now download it so let's take a look hop over here refresh and hit download and there we go there's our csv that downloaded let's open it up in excel and there you go we've opened it in excel and there we go there's our csv and as you can see uh, I was able to download a file directly from the browser using this method uh, after creating it from the CSV. So there you go. That's how you generate a CSV on the client side from an object, in this case array, and cause it to download on the client.